Well, today's subject is on machine guarding. And uh, I think this is one of those big subjects in the safety world. Every year OSHA goes out and they, they publish their top 10 citations that they put out. And almost invariably, it's going to be hazard communication is right up there as, as number one or, or, or right in the vicinity. And I look at that and I say, yeah, you know, chemical safety is important. I'm an industrial hygienist by trade and I, I believe in that stuff. <clears throat> However, I, um, However, I look at this subject as being um, uh, machine guarding being absolutely as important, but I think it's more important because this is something that has long term impacts. This is something that is um, acute. It's right now you lose your fingers, um, you get caught in a machine. This is a big deal. So I really think this is an, imp an important subject. Um, and really, I, I cut my teeth on this in the safety industry. And truthfully, this was, um, this was one of the reasons why I do the work that I do today. I was busily working away in a, in a metal fab shop, working on a machine. And one of my coworkers suddenly is running past me, holding his hand like this. And I turn and look, and there, there are drops of blood behind him all through the shop and he just had his finger amputated and uh, that was one of those times I was I, I was deciding um, what direction my career would take while I was while I was in college and that was a pretty defining moment so this subject is important to me and it should be important to you and I don't care what job you do it should be important because every one of us has some exposure to machine hazards um, let's see this video just always creeps me out a little bit um, and makes me sad of, of what uh, people, of what conditions people have to work at, work in around the world. And, uh, and sometimes we blow off safety items here in this country when we have the ability to, to easily handle, easily make things safe. Well, one important point is machines don't care. A machine doesn't care if your fingers are in the way. A machine doesn't care if your hair gets wrapped up in a, in a shaft or a drill press. Uh, a machine doesn't care about you at all. It's just going to keep doing its job. And if you get in the way, you're going to suffer the consequences. So with that, with that being said, we have, to, we have to understand what those hazards are and we have to make an effort to protect ourselves. Machine guarding is one way that we do that. These machines are all around us, and it's not—it's not just um, you know out in the workshop. It's not just um, you know the types of things that we you know a lathe or a table saw or something like that. Machines are all around us. Um, they can be fixed. Uh, they can be something like a uh, pulley or a sprocket or a shaft on a on a piece of equipment that runs your air handling system in your in your building. They can be mobile. They can be hand tools. We have to ask ourselves: Are we protected? Are all of those guards in place? Now, some of us, like like myself, grew up on a farm, <laughs> and we had to learn early on how to protect ourselves from these from these types of mechanical hazards because if we didn't. We were toast. We were dead. We were. We would lose our fingers or or our lives, um, and uh, and and so that that was some of my early training was to watch out for those things. I had friends. I had friends get injured in in various different ways. I had front one friend get wrapped up in a power takeoff shaft on a tractor when he was he was uh, kindergarten age. And it wrapped it up and pulled all of the flesh off of his off of his torso. And uh, if it wouldn't have been for a, a, what I think was a miracle, he he would not be with us today. But uh, but he was able to be saved. But it it only takes a second with these types of hazards until they can have a major impact on us. Um, like I said, it's not just shop tools, kitchen mixers, um, cutters, things that we use. Um, every day, uh, they may be craft-like um, tools that we're using, also have machine guarding exposures. They can be those fixed things like motors, shafts, belts, pulleys, um, and, and we've got to be aware of what those things are. We look at the basic hazards here. We have point of operation 
Um, and what does that mean? Well, it's where that machine does its work. If it's a table saw, it's where that blade is turning. That is the point of operation. Um, if it's a grinder, it's where that wheel is spinning. If it's a shaft, it's that where the, where the shaft is turning. Um, okay, power transmission devices. And that's really what we're talking about on that shaft, pulleys, belts, um, those types of things. It's taking the power, and those could be motors as well, um, taking the power to the equipment that needs to be turned. So one of the really common ones that we see in our local government agencies are well pumps, vertical pumps. You have a big motor and a shaft that goes down into, into the well casing to operate the, the pump to provide the water to our, to our cities. Um, in those cases, many times we have, to, we have to adjust the packing on that pump. Well, that exposes us to a serious hazard, part of a power transmission device. And, uh, and, and if with, that's not properly guarded, it could be a lethal hazard. And we also have operating controls that are a part of those things that can, that can cause us to have exposure to these hazards. All right, um, you've heard me say this a lot of times, I don't really care about OSHA. Um, OSHA is the, that's the legal um, arm of the, of the uh, federal government and also our local governments here or our state governments here that can write you a citation, but I don't care about OSHA. I care about your fingers, your, your body parts. I care about you staying alive, but we also have to be aware that there are regulations that we have to abide by. And it also gives us a good point to, uh, to start from. If we talk about what the, what the law says, <clears throat> then that gives us the direction. So the law says that an employer has to provide one or more methods of machine guarding, um, shall be provided, shall means will, to, uh, to protect the operator and other employees in the area, in the machine area from hazards, uh, from hazards such as those created by point of operation, ingoing knit points, remember that, where the gears are coming together, um, rotating parts, flying chips, and sparks. So basically, if there is a point of operation that could potentially bite us, we need to, or throw things out at us, we need to protect that with a guard, okay? So we're gonna talk about some rules and I put them in big type, so they're important. We put them up early in the presentation. Rule number one, if a guard is provided, you have to use it. We can't take it off and say, ah, oh, that doesn't really apply in what I'm doing today. We see many people will go out and buy a brand new angle grinder and the first thing they do is pull that guard off. Well, that thing has a purpose. The purpose of that guard is to slow down the shrapnel when that grinding disc or, or uh, wheel flies apart and breaks. And inevitably, those you will have one of those break apart on you um, if you use a grinder very long. So there's a reason why it's there and we have to use it from a legal standpoint and from a safety standpoint. If the, guard, if the guard is provided, we have to use it. If I have to remove a guard for whatever me reason, if I have to put my hands inside or around that point of operation, the machine needs to be locked out. We've got a, um, a great video on YouTube out there on lockout tagout uh, webinar recording as well. So watch, uh, go and watch that one as well. But if that, if you have to take that guard off, you've got to lock out that machine. Manufacturers requirements are requirements. So if a, if a manufacturer provides a guard or if they tell you exactly how that guard is to be used, those are requirements and OSHA is going to give you a citation um, on that if somebody gets injured or they come in and you haven't followed those manufacturer's requirements. So question about that, does that mean I have to read the owner's manual, the install manual, manuals? The answer is yes. Um, and give you, give you a quick example. Um, after, I, after I was working in that place where people were getting fingers cut off and, and all of that, I graduated from college and I, and I went to work for a company that, that had multiple OSHA citations. They were threatened with willful citations. If they had any more amputations, good place to go in for your first job, right? 
um, and uh, and they had all kinds of issues with this machine guarding. That's that's where I really started out was working on this in the safety world. One of the issues that they had was one piece of equipment had a pressure sensitive um, device. It was a map. So a uh, big plastic mat that had metal plates in there. And if you stepped on that mat, it would complete a circuit and it would tell the machine to shut off. And so it would automatically shut off the machine. So if I got too close to the point of operation, it would shut it off. Well, that was all fine and good. It was in place, but somebody got their finger cut off. Why did that happen? Well, OSHA came in and investigated and they, and they looked at the, the machines, the manufacturer's installation guide and it said that that mat needed to be anchored in a very specific location. And if it, if it weren't anchored that way, it wasn't anchored that way, um, then it didn't meet the requirements and it wasn't safe. Well, uh, the company had not taken, uh, had not read the book and they had not installed that mat the way it was supposed to be. And they thus issued the citation law on there. All right. If a manufacturer doesn't provide a guard, it doesn't mean that it isn't required. There are tons of pieces of equipment out there that were produced before OSHA even existed that are still in operation. There's lots of equipment that we're using in a different manner than it may have been intended. Sometimes we'll buy used equipment that has had guards removed. That doesn't change the requirement. If I have a hazard on that piece of equipment, I need to guard it. All right, so let's just look at some basic things on guarding. There's, there are various different types of guards. One is a barrier guard, and that could be something like um, your guard on your circular saw, that little guard that goes on the top of the blade and then the spring-loaded one on the bottom. Um, those are called barrier guards. It could be a piece of uh, metal plate. It could be plexiglass. It could be expanded metal. It's something that keeps us away from the point of operation. It keeps us out of the danger zone, okay? That's a barrier guard, physical guard. It needs to be securely installed so it can't be easily defeated. If there's a gate, but all I have to do is pull the gate open and walk in, that's a problem. So it needs to be, I have to use tools. Um, and in some cases they have to be specialized tools so I can't easily defeat it. There are other guards that we can use. And some of these are um, electronic, but in, in their nature. One is a two hand trip. And that doesn't always have to be electronic but most cases it is. Um, <clears throat> When I was working for that for that company where fingers were getting cut off, we used the giant mechanical power presses. So these were big vertical presses and a ram would come down and it would punch holes in metal. It would do various processes to to prepare metal tubing for the for the widgets that we were building. Well, <clears throat> we used a two hand trip system where there was, a, there was a control pendant and it would have your hands far enough apart that I couldn't trip it with one hand and the buttons were recessed in so I couldn't take a piece of something and put over top and trip both buttons at the same time. I had to use two hands. So I pushed both of those buttons at the same time. What did that do? Well, it kept my hands out of the point of operation. I had to come over and push the buttons here and then I could go back to working in the point of operation and take my um, take my parts in and out of there. Well, is that a is that a hundred percent fail safe? No. What if I have two operators? Well, it doesn't work. It doesn't protect that second operator. So in some cases, and 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 after I went to work there, we installed um, we installed various different protections there, and some of those were present sensing, like we talked about that map. If I get into that point of operation, it uh, will, will disable the machine so it won't work. Light curtains were another thing. Sometimes um, I had a job where I had to be able to get into the point of operation to put stock in and out and we would use light curtains. So that's an electronic system, shoots a beam of light across and so you have a, a sending unit and a receiving unit. And if anything breaks one of those beams in there, it shuts the machine off so it won't operate. Um, doesn't shut it off, but prevents operation. 
And you could, it was a really cool thing. You could set it up so I could have a piece of stock sticking out that was, you know, a couple inches across and it would blank out that part of the light curtain. So, so it wouldn't, tr wouldn't disable the machine. But if I put my hand in beyond there, it would shut it off. This picture that you see here is, is also a way that we can use that. I can have a barrier guard, but sometimes I'll have a piece of equipment that I have to get into to clear jams, um, move material through, do some part of a part of or some task, and it's on and it's on a regular basis. Well, in this in this situation, there is a switch, a proximity switch, um, either a physical thing that breaks or it's a magnetic switch. <clears throat> and when I open that gate, it it disables the machine so it can't operate. Okay, so there are a lot of different types of guards that we can use. For most of us, we're going to be dealing with basic barrier guards. All right, the next thing that we're going to talk about are adjustable guards. <clears throat> Sometimes, and this is not a great picture because it's hard to see what it is, but this is a bandsaw. You can see on the lower left, there's the blade going down. There's a little thumb screw on this guard and it goes up and down. Most people probably don't even realize that this is a, this is a guard because on a lot of band saws, it's adjusted all the way to the top and they tighten it up there and they never move it again. And so we have 12 inches of blade just open as we're in there doing the job. Well, this guard should be adjusted down to just barely above the piece of work that we're working on. Why? Well, then, then I don't have that exposed blade. That gives us a, a bigger level of protection. If I slip with that open blade there, or if the blade happens to break, that puts me in the line of fire. Okay. So if there's an adjustment, we have to adjust it and we have to make it safe. <clears throat> Just one quick second here. Fix one thing. Uh, drill presses. This is actually a fairly latecomer in machine guarding. And this is the spindle guard on a drill press. This is required now. And almost none of our drill presses came initially equipped with a, with a spindle guard. Now, this picture that I have on here, the guard is inappropriately installed. It should actually be adjusted up to cover the spindle. Not necessarily the bit, partially it'll cover the bit, but it's, it's to cover the spindle. That uh, rotating shaft that can catch your hair if you've got long hair or wrap up in your clothing um, and causes, causes significant injury. So OSHA will write you a citation for not having this in place. And many of you out there uh, may have had that experience already. You can tell on this, this is a, an aftermarket um, guard and uh, but it has multiple axes of adjustment and uh, they just haven't adjusted it in the appropriate way. Okay. All right. Next one, table saw. These are really common hazards that are out there. Table saws are wicked. They have a lot of power and they've got a big blade in there going at high rates of uh, rates of revolution. And if you get any part of your body in there, it's going to be an ugly, ugly mess. So we have various guards to protect us in table saw operation. And unfortunately, a lot of people buy a new table saw and the first thing they do is pull that guard off. And I can understand that to a certain extent because most of the old guards that came with those table saws were junk. They really didn't, didn't work well and they made it extremely difficult to do the work, sometimes impossible. But that's not an excuse. Um, we have we have good guards. If you look at this one in this picture here, this will, the guard stays totally up and out of your way, but it will cover the blade. It will cover the point of operation. So stuff won't fly out at you. And if you happen to slip while you're, while you're feeding the, the material into this table saw, guess what? You're going to hit the guard, but you're not going to hit the blade. Um, this is in, in addition to the, in addition to the, the, blade guard. We also have some other things that should be installed on these table saws. One is an anti-kickback device. And all that is, is I feed my material through. This has some little fingers, some little teeth that go down that prevent the material from going backwards, spring-loaded. Um, 
if your if your blade on your table saw happens to bind and catch this material it has enough force there that it can shoot it back at you and and potentially cause fatal injuries or really serious injuries so anti kickback device in addition, all table saws should have push sticks available. So if you look in this picture, there's a red push stick there that will allow us to follow through, follow that material through as we're making a cut, but not put our hands into the point of operation into that area. Okay. Oh, uh, and just let me, let me go back on uh, table saws. There's some technology out there. I believe the brand name is called Saw Stop. And it is something that will automatically um, stop your blade if you're, it's an electronic thing, it senses if you touch the blade um, and it will stop it. And there are some great videos on YouTube. You can, you can look those up. It basically ruins your saw, but it keeps you from slicing your fingers off. But you have to physically touch the blade before it happens. Does that mean you're, you're going to prevent all injury? No, it's just going to be less. You'll probably still get cut, all of those things. I'm not saying don't use this technology, but realize that it doesn't preclude using those important guards that keep us away from the blade. All right, grinders, two different kinds of grinders that we that we regularly use. Those are angle grinders. That's like in this picture where we where we have a manual grinder that we plug in and we take it to the to the work. And then we have a bench grinder where um, it's mounted to the bench and we take the we take the work material to it. We use it for different types of operations, different types of of stock that we're working on. Um, they're both dangerous because they rotate at a high rate of speed and they also have these abrasive wheels discs and if they happen to blow apart they can cause really really serious injuries so and just a sidelight on this um, we placed up some some videos specific to angle grinders and bench grinders on our youtube channel if you go to our channel there's a there's a little search button inside the channel and you can find any on any of the subjects that we're that we've got on there you can search through it and find those videos so i highly encourage you to go and watch those because there's a little more detail there even though they're um, less than five minutes long your bench grinder oh just uh, back to that angle grinder make sure that guard stays in place so you can see in here We've got a couple of grinders there and they've taken both the guards off. This was a picture I took oh, a while ago, <clears throat> but it's fairly common. So let's go out and inspect our shops and see that those are, that those are in place and, uh, and use them appropriately. Okay. Bench grinders. Um, I'm going to send out, this is, this is something that OSHA provides, this grinder checklist, and it has all the settings and all the things that we need to do to make sure our bench grinder is safe um, with maybe, without maybe the exception of, um, of having anchored to the workstation. It needs to be anchored to the table. It can't just have it sitting there loose. A couple of, a couple of important guard um, measurements on this, in addition to making sure that I have the, the stone, the guard around um, all of the wheel and the flat and the spindle on the end, we have two important guards there. One is the tool rest and the other one is the, is the tongue guard. The tool rest should be no more than one eighth of an inch away from the wheel as it rotates. And the tongue guard should be no more than a quarter inch away. Um, pretty simple things, but Almost every time I walk out and look at it, look at a grinder, we aren't meeting those requirements. Doug, you just popped up there. Did you have something to say, or we just you just want to say hi? Oh, you're muted. I'm just getting ready. Oh, okay. <laughs> wrap up. <laughs> um, just a couple of a couple of things on on hand tools. Um, we want, it, we want it to go out to the tool crib and inspect. You can see in this picture, this circular saw, the, the guard has been, or yeah, the guard has been jammed in place. Why? I don't know, but sometimes the guards make it a little more difficult to make our cuts and people will, will make their tool unsafe um, in an effort to, to make that cut. Um, this could be similar on, I've seen uh, miter saws have similar issues 
as well as many other pieces of equipment. So get out there and inspect each of those tools. We want to anchor our equipment. So anything that can tip or walk like a drill press that if I load that with, with heavy stock, it could tip over, that should be anchored to the floor or to a big plate to keep it from tipping over. Couple other, uh, a couple other things, as we walk around, look at fixed things like fans. So if I've got a fan up in a high window in, in my shop, there's a fan up there, does that one have to be guarded? And the answer is no. OSHA says above seven feet, those types of things don't have to be guarded. Now, we've gotta be smart about this though. If there's a possibility that people can get to um, these hazards, We've got to we've got to guard those things. But look around uh, here on the right. You know we've got some equipment there. There's there's pulleys and belts and things like that. Um, let's let's look at all of those and get those guards in place. Something like a lawnmower on the left. This discharge discharge guard is missing, and so there's that blade right there that somebody's foot or somebody reaches in there. Um, they can have a, a serious, serious injury from that. So every time you use a piece of equipment, we should inspect it. And then we should have some regimented inspections that we put in place uh, at least once a month. We're going out and inspecting for this and other safety items. Just in summary, guards are essential to your safety. Um, you need to know what your equipment's hazards are. Think through this. How could this go wrong? Um, where, could, where could this piece of equipment cause me in, injury and ask, are all the guards in place? If not, stop. Um, if the guard's missing, we should lock that piece of equipment out until we've got a guard in place. And, uh, and like I said, use lockout tag out. If I have to work on a piece of equipment, lock it out. Um, another great video out there as well that you can, that you can check out. Inspect, inspect, inspect to prevent those things. Okay, Doug, <laughs> what'd you have to, what'd you have to say? Oh boy, that one creeps you me know, up. This video here, I, I know a guy that got his hand into a log splitter like that, and that's, that's no joke. And, you know, I just want to emphasize the attitude is so important here when we're talking about machine guarding, because I know the thought process, you know, sometimes we bypass that guard or we remove it. And the thought process is, well, this will let me do what I'm trying to do, but I'll just be extra careful. And being extra careful is not a replacement for that uh, piece of machine guarding. Being extra careful is not a way to mitigate risk. So we really need to make sure uh, that uh, we follow you know, this standard and that we make sure that our equipment is safe to use and that our employees are only using equipment that's in safe working condition, including having the guards in place. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely, Doug. Thanks for, thanks for, for that. That definitely, uh, definitely is absolutely correct. Um, if folks, if we got any questions, uh, go ahead and type those into the chat box and we will we'll answer those right now. I can't see the chat box, Doug. Do we have anything in there yet? Nope. I, I, I no have them yet. totally transfixed and they haven't, they haven't uh, <laughs> been able to write any questions. If you've got any questions, type those in while uh, we're waiting to see if any questions come in. Just remember, Doug, in just a few minutes, will be presenting in a half hour, he'll be presenting on fire prevention. Um, so if you haven't signed up for that, go to utahtrust.gov and click on training and events. And you can sign up right, right there. All right. Anything come in? Nope. All right, thank you folks. This is an important subject. Um, a challenge for you today is to walk out and check those, check those angle grinders, check your bench grinder and, and just see how things are going. I'd love if, if, if some of you would actually, actually send me a note, you know, email or um, give me a call and just say, wow, we're 100% we are in compliance. I went out and everything was perfect or yeah, we've got some things to do, and uh, and but you know, I grabbed that angle grinder and took it and took it into my office, and uh, I'm going to have a talk with whoever comes looking for it about getting that guard back on the angle grinder. Let's start the conversation. Let's make safety part of our culture, um, and so we so we don't ever have to um, don't have to say, to ever say oh never again. Let's not let it happen the first time. Thanks, folks. Appreciate all the all that you do out there. 
um, and go out and have a safe day.